a G, a gangster. Street talk for a tough guy has died. Randall Watts was a suspected murderer and drug dealer, gunned down in a drive-by shooting. His friends take him into his hangout, Rose Tavern, for one last round. They chant the hard question. Is there heaven for a gangsta? It's a lyric from a rap song. The rapper, Master P. He's a friend of Randall Watts. They're from the same neighborhood. I done seen people get held up at gun perm. You know, I done ran for my life trying to dodge a drive-by. You gotta be from there to understand that. Police say it's getting better. But this is still one of the most violent places in one of the most violent cities in the country. Calio Projects, Third Ward, New Orleans. If you body, body, body. We'll say you body, body. I represent where them killers hang. Third Ward, Calio Projects, we got our own thing. This is small hood, but it's all good. And Mr. Rogers ain't got nothing on my neighborhood. I body, I'm body. It's early in the morning. I'll tell you that. Born Percy Miller. Master P is back in the hood with his record label crew. Man, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? Everyone at Calio knows him. Seven years ago, he was the guy selling CDs out of his car. Now he runs his own record label. We know Limit Soldier. Makes his own movies. We know Limit Soldier. Raw ghetto ambition and hard work made him a rich man. Uh, all right, let's get these right. souls going. Able to throw parties for radio executives in the Bahamas. We've done gold, we've done platinum. Our next level will be multi-platinum. From the project to the islands, you heard me? I don't think y'all heard me. He took us to the apartment on Irato Street, where he, three brothers, and a sister were raised by his grandmother. I mean, these little kids ain't even five and six years old. They done seen murders right there on the spot. You know, I seen a murder at four years old right here on this very post. A turning point. The death of his 18-year-old brother, Kevin, nine years ago. A shooting over drugs. That's, that's something that either drive you crazy uh, or make you change your life, you know, and me. It made me change my life. Though he comes back to Calio, he knew he wanted to get out. He went to the University of Houston on a basketball scholarship until he hurt his knee. Moved to California, got a business degree, started a record store, and turned it into a record label. This grassroots knowledge of the marketplace got him his first gold record for The Ice Cream Man. The Ice Cream Man was a role model because he had his own business. Because he wore the white suit and, and everybody liked him, I mean, nobody had nothing bad to say about the Ice Cream Man. And people spent money with him. Like a lot of things in the ghetto, good and bad are mixed up. And Master P's music reflects that. In street slang, ice cream can mean drugs, but he would become a different kind of ice cream man. Mr. Ice Cream Man, a Instead of drugs, he's selling music. He resents criticism. The music promotes violence. I'm just talking about what I see. I mean, look around. Look, look, what you see? You tell me what you see. You see a bunch of mansions around here? Do you? No. Okay, well, that's reality. That's what I'm talking about. It, it, it don't even get no realer than this, you know? But I bet you one thing, every person back here probably own a gun. <laughs> 
So that's what we talk about. And that's real. That's real. Oh, shit, I say I'm stuck in this ghetto. It's a ghetto again. Being real is crucial to a rapper's reputation. If he softens the harsh reality of life, he risks losing credibility with his ghetto audience and risks his success. A ghetto thing, a ghetto thing. Master P keeps it real in his music, but he says he doesn't condone violence in real life. I don't come from that, and I, I'm trying to go the opposite way. I don't want to be walking around cracking people in the head and drive by and on people. That ain't me. <laughs> Nonetheless, his low-budget, self-produced movie "I'm About It" is raw and violent. Wait, wait, wait! Up my door! My ghetto hero. It uses real people from the neighborhood. His high school basketball coach directed it. Hey, you can never be Bypassing movie houses, Master P took the film straight to video sections of record stores. The soundtrack hit number four in the Billboard pop charts. The video made Billboard's top ten list in sales. Before I die, I'm gonna close my eyes and let them fly. It's selling dope, it's the way you died and let me die. So you don't think you're making the gangster life glamorous? No. Nah, my music is like a movie. It have a beginning and to an end. And if you listen to the end of my music, you're going to learn something. I mean, if you listen to the beginning, you're probably going to think it's negative. As in this song. My ghetto hero. Which ends like this. In heroes, <laughs> sometimes they end up being zeros. The reason why I make my music like this, I'm really trying to show them that, you know what, it is another way out. Hey, young girls, young girls. Yeah, it's 12 o'clock at night, you should be at home. New Orleans policeman Norman Taylor doesn't buy it. He believes gangster rap offers no solutions, that it treats women badly and glorifies violence. And they talk about shooting down the police and, um, and getting your gat and, and cracking on this. And, uh, that's ridiculous. That is totally ridiculous. I mean, no one criticizes um, the Godfather movies for being too violent. Charlie R. Braxton writes about the rap scene. I think that there, uh, in order for you to change the music, you've got to change the reality from which the music is born. The music reflects the reality. The music doesn't create the reality. That ghetto reality is fascinating to young record buyers. Rap music is now a billion dollar a year business. Most of its buyers are white teenagers. Yeah, I'm about it. <laughs> this the closest they could get to the ghetto, and people want to know. I mean, when they watch, when white kids watch the movie, they say, "Man, that's how it is out there." It's better to let people watch and listen to stuff because they get chance to make their opinion. You know, when you tell them the good stuff and the bad stuff, and that, that's that's what learning is all about. We know limit soldiers. Unlike other rappers, Master P has not sold out to bigger interests. I I told he prides himself on his independence and business skills. And he's issuing a warning to all gangbangers, dopers, and G's from this platform of success. You're beginning to hear a different perspective, a human perspective. One that's saying, I really don't want to do this, but there is no other alternative for me. And everybody in the ghetto use nicknames. Like Rap and reality, hand in hand. Right, Randall Watts played himself in Master P's movie. Two weeks after the release, he was murdered. Lord, he stole it! Friends say Randall Watts was a good man, forced to do bad things to survive in the ghetto. What do you think about when you think about Rim? Somebody that was well respected. I mean, everybody got their good and their bad side, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I got my good and I got my bad side, but I, I, I tend to remember all the good things. Master P believes he's the ice cream man, the role model for the ghetto, not as a gangster rapper, but as a hard worker whose labor got him out and who has never turned his back on those still there. So Calio and Master P gave Randall Watts a real New Orleans send-off. Man, I'm glad you're going on to a better place because it ain't no more fighting, it ain't no more shooting, and it ain't no more tears. 
and that's what we dance for. Like, man, you done made it.